let's talk about saving these professional config files. All right, so you see all of these files here. These are called config files. And you can see mo the majority of the time they are named config.ini. Now we have two exceptions here being Skyrim and Ghost Recon Breakpoint, where they are not going with the standard config for the name, but they're still INI files and they're still all set up the same. And you can see here, this is where your games or applications settings are all stored at. And you can come in here in a lot of games, if you know where to look, and you can modify them here and sometimes you find settings here that aren't available to you in game. And you could come in here and you can maybe make some of the settings lower than what they could go in game. That way you can get better performance or if you have what people would call a potato computer, you could play uh, maybe some newer games at better frame rates at the cost of that visual fidelity. And I do believe some of the, at least in some games, there's a YouTube channel out there that uh, is specific for showing you how to lower all these settings and go and tricks outside of the game uh, so that you can play uh, newer games. At the time, there was like uh, Witcher 3 for playing it on very low spec computers. And some of that, if I do remember right, was coming in and modifying the config file for that game so the point is we're going to take a look at how to create these professional looking files where you see we have these kind of like headers and then information stored within them we have this space here and then we have another header for another complete section all of its information and then space and we have another header for another piece of information and you can see it just continues all the way down that and you can see here in this case we have I start up here and then we have no information so we just go straight into the next one a file version all right so i'm going to show you how we can recreate this uh inside of gato for your games so i'm just going to go ahead and create a user interface doesn't really matter because we're just going to have this open up automatically anyway all right so i'm just going to add a script to it we're going to say save config it doesn't really matter what node this is on save it save config for my scene and uh, we'll keep the ready so we can call our function in there all right so just give me one second i'm going to go ahead and create myself a settings variable and this variable is going to be a dictionary okay i've gone ahead and created my settings dictionary and what i've done here is i've basically recreated the one from the skyrim i and i for us to take a look at and we see we have our set actor section here and then inside of that is a dictionary and in this case we only have one one key value pair and then we tab back out right we end that dictionary and we have another section called animation and that is of course is a dictionary and inside of there we only have one and then we get to archive and we have uh, another integer so right now we have floats we have integers and now we run into having array so we got a wide variety of data types this is why i selected it so we can have a side-by-side -side comparison and we could have different types of data being shown and represented here all right so i'm just going to come down and we need to actually create our save and load functions so i'm going to say funk save config we need don't need to return anything now how do we actually go about doing this well we're going to need a config file so we're going to need a variable since this is temporary i can just call it c and it'll be fine this is a config file and it's going to be a new config so config file dot new and then we run into a for loop and then for the most part we're just about done and it's simple as that so we go for and we need section in settings dot keys all right so we dive into a for loop here 
Now in uh, the cases here for a config, we can see that they're always gonna be strings, all my sections. So I'm gonna go ahead and cast my section as a string. And then we can go in and do for key in settings section. All right, and we can dive in and that'll give us our next piece. Now, inside of section, so for example, inside of audio, we're gonna look at our keys. All right, so that's gonna be these lines here. And we can see during all of these, these are also, also gonna be strings. I feel like I just said also, also. Uh, but these are also strings. Now, if you have a situation where you have a variety of different data types all the time, then you could come in here and you could use variant here. So if you want to say static typing, but have have maybe a variable that's uh, dynamic, uh, you could do it that way just by calling it a variant. So I'm going to go back to a string here. And what we do, so now that we're inside of this section, is we go to our config file. So C dot, and we do set value. And what we pass in here is going to be the section, the key, and then we want the value of that. So settings, section, key. That tings, plural, there we go. And that's just both. So I'm going to back out of my for loop. So I back out one and two. And we just call config file. So C dot save. And we pass in the path of where we want it to save at. So I'm just going to go ahead and save it in user colon slash slash. In this case, and just call config dot ini. Or you know what? Since we're imitating Skyrim, we'll say Skyrim 2 dot ini. In this case. So if we go ahead and we come in and we call our save config. So I'm going to run this scene and this should automatically save it for us. And you know what? I'll copy that. And no, I don't need to copy that. What am I doing? <laughs> we're going to go ahead and just open it up. So we're going to say, whoops, OS dot, uh, is it user? Yeah, user data directory. All right, so it's going to save it and then open us up directly to it. And we can take a look. So I'm going to go ahead and run it. Here we go. So now I can, we can see we have Skyrim2.ini labeled here and I can open that up. And if I bring that over and I, one moment while I get the other file. And there you go, you can see they're pretty well identical but the only difference being is in ours, uh, when Gato does it, we have this extra space in here. So if I do that, you can see it's pretty much identical at this point. All right, so you can see this is how we can go ahead and save these config files. Now, how can we, how do we load these things up? So now that we don't need this, we're gonna go ahead and uh, close that. Yeah, don't save. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change uh, this one right here. So our top option, B, use nav mesh for movement. I'm gonna change it from zero to two. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna print this out for us. Uh, it's going to be in here and that's going to be inside of actor so i'm going to say print settings actors and this <laughs> this uh oh just one no plural all right and i'll comment those out and then we can call our load config which we have yet to create. We'll create that in just one moment. And I'm going to print after that as well. So we can see the before and after. All right, let's create this load config. So func load config, avoid return. And what is it that we need to do here? Well, we pretty much just need to get what we had before and reassign it, right? So we're going to do something very similar. We're gonna need a config file, a temporary one. So we're gonna say var c, and we know that's a config file. We'll assign that to a config file dot new. 
And we can use the, take advantage of this to check for errors, see if there are any issues loading our file. So we'll say var err, and it's gonna be, the type is gonna be error. And this will be equal to our config file. So C dot load, and we load in our file. I'm just gonna grab that from our save and pass it in. And if you want to put the type safe, uh, or you want to check for those errors, you just say if error uh, not equals OK. And then you can do whatever, right? So print, uh-oh, we have an issue. All right, so this, if we did not load this file successfully, we're going to get this result printed out to us. Now you can push an error, you can do whatever it is you want to do. But if it is okay, we're going to continue on. And to continue on, we're just going to do a for loop. So for section, which was our strings, right? In settings dot keys. For T in settings section. And I believe key as well was a string. And we just do settings, section, key. All right, so we're getting the values up here. So we're saying we're getting our settings, section, and key. And we're going to assign those to this value here, which is the value that we have stored. And to do that, we go equals C, our config file, dot get value. And we have an open close parentheses here now what do we put in here well simple section key all right so remember the default value that we're looking at is right up here we're looking at a zero and inside of our config well we went ahead and changed that to a two so we see a zero printed out here for the default and then it's going to load and we see it printed out again and it should be a two so let's go ahead and run this. And if it does, all right, so we see we have no issues running. We did not get our uh, error printed out to us here. And by the way, this is an error code. So if you wanted, you could come in and uh, do something like the following, say, oh, uh, put in like code. Like so. Right, and then dot format and just pass in the error. And then this will give us uh, an error number. If you're curious about that number, um, you can actually find these error codes and I'll show you where to find those in just a moment. But those will be very useful if you have, uh, if somebody gives you logs for an issue. Uh, but you can see down there, we have zero and two printed out and that is really small for some reason. Usually it's bigger, uh, but I guess because I'm using a different version then go ahead, just jumped up to uh, size 30. So you can see zero printed out. And then we loaded our config and the value is now two. All right, so there you go. There's how you can create these, these files that are look very professional that every game uses. And if you're creating an application or a tool, this will come in very handy for yourself as well. And those error codes, again, I'll show you where to find those. All right, so if you just come in, I don't know why this is so big. If you just bring up the help, search error under global scope, you'll see error parameter out of range, connection error, parse error. And if I were to double click on that to bring us in, you can see all of the error numbers here. So you see a 47, that'll be a bug. Um, and if we scroll up, we can see one is failed. Okay is zero. Two is unavailable, three unconfigured, four unauthorized. And you can see a lot of issues here. File not found, that's probably one that you may have if you have that situation. Or possibly nine if the path is incorrect. Uh, can't open 12, you get the idea. So you can find all of your error codes here. So if you do this and keep good logs, for your project then if someone gives you their log file you can easily find the error codes and hopefully hopefully figure out which section 
of what part caused that error, match the code that you have to find out what the issue is, and then from there you can be like, oh, that's on us, we have an issue, we have a bug we gotta fix, or you could turn around and be like, oh, well that's uh, an issue with you because it's something you have to type in as a user and you mistyped it. You know, maybe that's the issue. But with that, that'll at least help you narrow it down, whether it's your fault or their fault and what part of your code is happening. But anyway, uh, config files, that's how you save and load them. And if you want to be type safe, there's how you can type them as well. But with that, take care, have yourselves a good one, and I'll see you guys in the next one.